What's up, baseball players? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, we're going to talk about should you bunt? We'll talk a little bit about run expectancy and whether coaches should be teaching young players to bunt in an increasingly buntless MLB game. All right, if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. I'm a former pro pitcher. I'm the author of two, soon to be three, baseball books. You'll find my online courses in the description below, as well as other videos related to this one. So in today's video, should you bunt? And as a coach, should you be teaching players to bunt? Do they really need to be developing this skill? So let's talk about some of the pros and some of the cons and some of the, uh, you know, the considerations here within. You'll find timestamps in this video also. So if you want to jump around, you can do that. So number one, let's talk about some of the reasons you should teach bunt bunting now. Hey, number one, obviously, it's a part of the game. So every player should learn at a fundamental level. But B, especially as players are developing and they're still becoming better hitters and they're just, you know, increasing their hand-eye coordination, bunting is a good skill to learn with that. Anecdotally, Ty Cobb, obviously one of the best hitters of all time in the Hall of Fame, he said when he would, uh, when he would slump, he would start bunting in batting practice because it would just sort of pull him back to waiting on the ball, trying to catch it with his barrel, you know, just watching it in as far as he could. So I think that is a great anecdote that when players go back to the basics that, hey, when I'm not hitting well, my timing is off, my maybe I'm just like mishitting stuff. So Ty Cobb used that to go back to basics for good hand-eye coordination, good timing, letting the ball get to him because obviously you can't lunge at the ball when you're bunting. So it's also going to help with back control, all that sort of stuff. If you can't catch a bunt on a square in the middle of your barrel, what's the likelihood that you can catch it square when you're swinging it? So I think from that general foundational hand-eye coordination, barrel timing, you know, barrel accuracy standpoint, bunting has its place, especially for developing players. Um, I think it's also a good thing to help players be have have less fear of the ball when they're getting when they're growing up. The best players have to have. And they have to be pretty fearless at the plate. If you're really scared of the ball, and a lot of young players are, that's not a good thing. That's not a good scenario. So teaching them to bunt and getting their face in there a little bit might be scary at first, but it's going to help them get through that and continue to develop. I mean, it's scary. I had to bunt when I was a pitcher. And like my second year of pro ball, we were in this weird National League Rules League. And it was terrifying trying to bunt 90 mile per hour uh, fastballs when I hadn't seen anything past high school pitching because I hadn't uh, had a bat in my hands since I was like 18. So that fear, it's a real fear. So that is, I think, also part of the discussion. Um, when we're talking about run expectancy and win probability, here's what you should know about bunting. So when you give up an out, you're almost always reducing your run expectancy. So for example, and this is based on major league data, and this is not exactly, cannot exactly be extrapolated to youth data or even college data because the fielding is so much different. It's incredible how well they field at the major league level. And you know, a sacrifice bunt is pretty much a guaranteed out, whereas a sacrifice bunt in the youth game is not a guaranteed out. You know, you all know that. So, but in MLB data, if you have runners on first and second, for example, and no one out, you're going to score on average like I don't know, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but it's like high ones or low twos in that scenario, given many many scenarios. So, no one out, first and second, you have an X amount of run probability. Let's say it's two runs. Now, if you bunt and give up an out, and now you have second, third, your run expectancy actually goes down. Maybe the likelihood that you score a run increases because you've got a guy on second, a guy on third, but your overall expectant amount of runs for that inning in that scenario is going to decrease because you've given up an out and you're closer to the inning ending. So having fewer outs is incredibly important. And basically the out is the most important currency in baseball. And this is what they talk about in Moneyball. The number one thing you can do to help your team is not get out. Doesn't matter how you get to first, if you can just not get out and get on base, you're helping your team's run expectancy significantly. However, that varies from win probability. Obviously, if you need one run and it's the last inning and you have a runner on second, bunting him to third, yeah, that's going to, by the run expectancy tables, decrease run expectancy for that inning. But it's also going to increase your probability of winning because you only need that one run. So obviously, there's times when it makes sense, times when it doesn't make as much sense. So if you have a big inning and you want the beginning in the second or third inning, it probably doesn't make sense to bunt runners from first and second to second and third because it's going to decrease the likelihood of get, having a really big inning that inning. 
Because again, more outs to play with means more potential for a lot of runs that inning. Um, but again, there's also caveats in the youth game where maybe a player is just like not going to get a hit off this pitcher. Like you have a really dynamite pitcher you're facing and you have a really weak hitter at the plate and he's just overmatched. So maybe asking him to bunt, even in a situation that doesn't make as much sense, might be the best chance for having a good outcome for that hitter. That's obviously a consideration uh, in the youth game too, as well as just like, hey, you got a fat, slow third baseman, let's bunt down there and kind of exploit the fact that maybe he's the wrong person to be playing that position. That happens too, right? So there's a lot of different scenarios in the amateur game, not just the youth game, but the amateur game in general, because it's tough to make that throw from third base on a decent bunt uh, that Nolan Arenado makes like it's his job. And in general, there's just a lot more variance in fielding quality and throwing the ball away puts pressure on the defense. Players get nervous. You know, third baseman makes one error. Now he's going to make two more because he's in his head. So you keep bunting. All that stuff makes good sense in the amateur game. It's just less relevant in the in the pro game because guys aren't they're not throwing away ground balls. They're not throwing away many bunts at all. Right. They're fielding their fielding position is, inc is incredible. So when we talk about when you should not bunt it really can hurt a beginning. So I know a lot of times teams want to get the first run of a game, for example. So maybe in the first inning, they get the leadoff guy on, they bunt him to second because they really want to score first. Well, if you bunt that guy to second there, it's hurt. we know it's hurting your run expectancy from the Major League Baseball data. Uh, but also now you have two, three, four coming up. You want as many guys on in that situation as you can rather than just trying to play for that first run. You should really be thinking about getting three or four runs that inning because when you get the leadoff guy on, it really sets the table for that. So don't hurt yourself with a big inning and let pitchers off the hook. Um, yeah, run expectancy does decrease, but it does make sense later in games. So just remember that. And remember, Major League Baseball doesn't pay players to bunt. No one's getting paid by their bunting. So when they go to arbitration, when they go to try to get that next salary bump and all those different rules, you know, Super 2, their arbitration years, uh, that's why guys are okay having a lower batting average today in exchange for more power numbers, right? They can hit 25 home runs and hit 240, and everyone's okay with that rather than hitting 270 and with, with 14 home runs. So no one's getting paid to bunt, so no one really wants to bunt, and teams would rather have guys swing no matter the count, even if that means a strikeout, and you know swing for it and see what happens, play for multiple runs rather than trying to bunt and get one. Obviously, you'll still see it late in game sometimes, especially when the pitcher's up because the pitchers are pretty much a, a guaranteed out. But again, if we're talking about should this still be in the youth game and trickle up, the answer is yes. Does this need to be a huge part of your youth game? I think it depends on your team. I think it depends on your level. I think it depends on what skills your squad has. If you're a really fast team and you're a really good base running team, then more bunting probably makes a lot of sense and you can win a lot of games that way. I've seen it even high levels where really fast teams who want to put the ball on the ground and move, steal bases, bunt, bunt for hits, bunt, you know, get guys over. They just want to create havoc. That can work really well for some teams. And colleges are always looking for leadoff type players. And if you're a one, two, eight, nine kind of hitter, being a good bunter, being a guy who can be a table setter and get on base multiple different ways, push a bunt to first, that can be really impressive, especially because there's fewer and fewer players like that in today's game than ever, because again, no one's really stressing bunting as much. So um, I wrote a long article, I'll, I'll link to it in the description below if you want to read more about run expectancy and about some of those tables, they're all linked in there so you can see the graphics. So definitely check that out in the description. Um, but again, leave a comment. Are you a coach? Do you do you coach bunting? Um, is this something you really spend a lot of time on? Do you do it every day in BP? Is it sort of an afterthought in BP? Um, you know, let's talk about bunting. But anyway, thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.